Gatorade. H2O. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Water sucks. No, it hand. really, really sucks. <laughs> Gonna call this part 21. It's just an update on the thousand gallon tank, which is taking forever. So, as you saw in the last couple of videos, we've had some uh, some crazy stuff going on with the 720, and then we went down to Columbus and got all those fish from Jonathan. A uh, nice selection of South American cichlids that he had there in that 540 gallon gallon tank. Which, uh, that's going to be coming home pretty soon. So you're going to be seeing that up and coming in another video. But here we go with the 1,000 gallon. Giving you a quick update. Four and five are in location. And you can see I've got the lines all tied in there. They go from five to four. On the inch and a half back-to-back -back 90s. And that one inch comes around the bend right over there. You can see the first one's tied in right here on the bottom right. And we're getting ready to do this one here, which is going to get tied in back there. So that's coming up. The motor is in position with the line coming in from chamber three. But, you know, sometimes it's good to kind of stop for a little bit and kind of regroup, which obviously that's happened a lot throughout the year. But during this downtime of kind of working on other stuff, kind of gives you a little bit to, you know, kind of stand back and see if there's any issues or problems that could arise in the near future. And I think I found a couple already. Yeah! Hey, good shot. It's about time. Hey, it is about time. I mean, I just couldn't get the ball in the hole. I wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. Oh! Oh! As you can see, I've got a couple of tees that are sitting here. And as much as this kind of hurts to do this, it's one of those things that if I don't do it now, I'm not going to have the chance to do it later. So by looking at this manifold right here, I have come up with, as much as this is going to hurt, I'm going to cut in another T right there and right here with two more one inch spears gate valves we're going to step that down from two inch down to one inch and it's one of those things i'd rather be looking at them than looking for them because i gotta believe in time it is possible that we could be introducing a couple more components within the system an algae scrubber is one of them and possibly a media reactor so I don't know but it's one of the things I want to see the T's I mean I can tie into them later but to do it later that could be very detrimental to the system and shutting down and trying to put those in you know with the cleaner and the glue and just I don't want none of that within the in the water column as we get rolling here the third item which has been kind of a hot debate with a friend of mine and he knows who he is but I want to put this T in right here because I want to bring another line over close to chamber 2 so that I can drain up here in the cups I want to have the ability to obviously have that constant flow of the uh, of the waste, the smeg, we all know it comes from the, the, from the protein skimmers and the cups and to have that draining down into this line, which in turn, as we know, goes around the bend and heads for the house drain. I think as we move kind of down this path, I want to be able to 
have like a fresh water rinse so I, I, I feel that there's going to be like a cold water line coming in up here somewhere where I can kind of wash out. I mean, granted, I'm going to take the cups out, take them to the sink and wash them down. But I think it would be kind of cool to have a fresh water uh, line over there where I can kind of just grab, turn the valve and, and rinse down those cups internally, you know, every once in a while. I mean, granted, yeah, I'm going to do the, the, the monthly norm where, you know, those things will be coming out and we'll do, do a nice thorough cleaning. But it'd be nice to, uh, to have that water there. So that being said, we're going to get a T there, a T there, and a T there. And uh, that should help us out. The other thing, real quick, if you have not noticed, but the room is a lot brighter. We've got two four-foot LED lights that we have installed. And man, did that change a lot of things. And with that, I've also come up with, when I was at Home Depot, they had two-foot LED strip bars. And we are also going to install those up underneath here because... Obviously, it's apparently this is pretty dark, and we want to uh, we want to light this area up. So that's going to be on a switch in itself, and uh, I mean obviously they're not going to be running all the time, but I want to have the ability to to light that up underneath there, so I can do general maintenance and see what is going on. So with that being said. Let's jump back on the 1,000. I think we are slowly kind of closing in on it. And uh, I got my partner here. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, give me a fist bump. I see you got the cardiac kids hat on. Cleveland Browns. Hell oh, yeah. We got something brewing coming up in this next season. So, all right, that being said, let's, uh, let's get rolling on the 1,000. That hurt doing that. Gosh. Oh well. Pay now or pay later. It'll all work out. Wait. <clears throat> yeah, high five is right, buddy. I knew you were gonna burp, but the vomit thing was awesome! <laughs> That's what she gets for eating my roast beef sandwich. <laughs> Willie, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, it's all over your pants and your shoes. What do you think? You like it? Yeah! Right on. Well, at least your ears are protected. All right, guys, just a quick update here. I just had to break out the uh, the router here. Man, was this loud in the room, the saltwater filtration room. One of the problems we had here is so we've got some pipe and some valves going right here underneath chambers four and five. So what I had to do with this valve here, this one inch valves, when we put it up against the two by six, the one inch plate was too far off the wall because of this area right here on the back side of the valve. So kind of came up with a, an idea by breaking out the, the router here and recessing in the hole in the two by six so now the valve sits nice and flush up against it. Now the two one-inch pipes on either side of that valve will be a lot closer to the 2x6 so that when we do go to throw on the clamps, we're right up against the board. So that's going to work out perfect. So we're going to have one right there below chamber 5, and then I'm just going to slide that right over there. Another one right up against chamber four. Man, look at the room. Everything's already a disaster. So, but it's all the little things that kind of add up. So now we're one step closer. So now we can go ahead and connect the, the drains here, which obviously this is going to turn and go right inside that hole and grab that bulkhead there. And the same thing over there. It's going to grab that bulkhead way back there. So there we go. We're getting real close on chambers four and five. All right, moving right along here, I just wanted to show you guys this. So we did move forward with uh, coming up with this contraption here on the drill press. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of wood mounted and seat clamped in. And I thought, well, this is probably the safest way to go. So we are kind of lined up. I went ahead and cut out the pipe that was here that went all the way over to there. 
I mean, we're going to redevelop that anyways. We talked about that just a few seconds ago. But I had to get it out of the way so that I could put these boards in position. And this was actually the original board from a couple months ago when we did drill uh, chambers one and two out. I had to cut it off way back here so I could get everything in position and lined up. So now we're there. So I've been actually waiting for about a week now for a part to show up. The thing we, well, the, the problem I kind of had here, let me get you a little bit closer here, is that I really can't move chamber one. It's locked into chamber two. On top of that, the damn thing's pretty heavy. But when we rotate this to get closer to where we got to go, I'm literally fully extended on the drill press. So when the hole saw goes in, which is right here. Because it's a circle. That's kind of nice. It's not like a triangle. A triangle has like a corner in the ends. This one is a circle. Okay, we get it. Three corners. Obviously, I would not make it to the cutting surface. So, that being said, I knew exactly what I needed, and that was this four inch extension bit, which just arrived in the mail today. I got it from Amazon. I think it was uh, about 12 bucks, but I had to wait uh, about seven, eight days for it to show up. So, here I go to, uh, I'm all excited and happy, and here's a two inch diamond hole saw bit. And I go to slide it into the shank, and it would not fit. So this is a 3 8 Why would you do this to me, you sick <laughs> And the shank is 3 8 I'm not quite sure why one would not go inside the other, but I sat here for 20 minutes with a flat file and taken off a couple thousands around this stud here, this perimeter the circumference of the actual shank so now everything fits in there nice and perfect so now we'll just go ahead and put in the set screws lock that in and now I can put this into the drill press and now we should be able to uh, reach where we got to go so we're all set up ready to go just wanted to show this to you real quick this is kind of a little bit of a nerve-wracking move because we don't want to break anything. So I'd rather just go kind of slow and uh, walk that hole right through there. So the only thing I got to do now is come up with uh, some type of catch basin down here so that when I go to pump the water up, it can roll right down the glass and into the catch basin. So that's what's coming up next. So got to keep that uh, hole saw nice and cool. Because it's a circle. Yeah, we heard about the circle. Yes, we're got familiar it. with shapes. Hey. Okay, we are ready to go. Boy, I tell you what, this is like 10 days in the making to do a 20 minute job. But we cannot, by no means, screw this up. So what you're looking at now is a little bit of hibbly contraption I just came up with. And we've got a piece of glass over here on the right, one on top, one down here on this angle. And there's a little plastic container down inside there with a little pump and we took a hose up here we got it all tie wrapped in with some uh, sticky backs right here and the tie wraps and I've got that hose right where I want it should be good so we'll go nice and easy let me go get the water filled up the, uh, the catch basin right there we'll do a couple just a quick practice run with that and see if uh, the water is going to be held within uh, this little this little work area. All right guys, it's next morning. We are ready to go. You can see I got the water running. Had a little bit of a hiccup last night. I noticed that when we did the uh, initial test, water was getting between the glass and the bucket and that water was was getting onto the blue plywood. So I had to beef up this area right here with silicone and let it set up for about 18 hours so we're we are ready to go now and uh here we go hope for the best on this one so let's go ahead and start drilling some glass
earmuffs. And there's the little squeezies. Because man, that thing is loud, loud, loud. I tell you what, you can guarantee I don't care where you're at in this house right now, you can hear this thing screaming. But there it is. I just turned off the drill press and the pump for the water, and you can see the glass puck is right there. And it's moving. And I've got some painter's tape on the other side because we did not want that to fall and hit the bottom of the chamber one. But there it is, the hole's drilled, and the big thing here is that we are not cracked on the 12 o'clock position or the three. Because I think I was about inch and three quarter, maybe an inch and a half from the edge of the glass at 12 o'clock to the top, and I believe we were just a hair under two, maybe one and seven eighths on the far three o'clock position. And it's I purposely did that because if in the event that chamber one were to start to overflow, the water that would start to arrive right here at the six o'clock position of the two inch bulkhead would be just above where those cutouts were at way back over here where the water transferred into this chamber, into this chamber through those six slots that you remember that we put in a long time ago. But when it comes to drilling, I just want to throw out two things. I mean, I know there's a crap ton of videos that are on YouTube, and a lot of guys are drilling them. And, I mean, obviously, for the most part, it's normally glass that's a lot thinner. But this being a half-inch thick, it is a very time-consuming issue. There's two things that I'm kind of watching for, because there's times where I actually don't even watch what's happening here. I'm actually watching... The actual gauge right here on the thickness of the glass and I'm sitting there just slowly walking this forward like this and it's a very slow process but the other takeaway is the noise there's definitely a difference between the grinding like if, if, you, if I just sit here and hold a certain position like say right there I'm here to learn everybody not to make out with you. Go on with the chlorophyll. This thing will grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. And it's a really high decibel scream where the diamond bit is just hovering right against the glass. But if you push it just a little harder and you and you force that inward, the pitch changes and you can even though i'm wearing two sets of earplugs you can hear it you can hear that the the grind is different and that's all i'm just going to throw out real quick it's really hard to explain it it's hard to see it you almost have to hold on to the to the drill press or i mean if you were drilling something with a handheld drill You'd actually have to listen. I mean, I think after you do it 30, 40, 50 times, and you know the pitch that you're listening for, you can definitely hear the change when this thing's biting in, and you know you're cutting. And that's the feel. It's, it, there's a certain noise that I'm listening for, and there's a feel, because you can, you can kind of feel it walking in. It's going hand-in-hand hand with that, that decibel reading. So, there it is. We're drilled. Uh, we're safe. And I'm very happy with that. So let's go ahead and break everything down. All right, guys. It's been about a week. And I'm happy to say uh, I think we're done. Finally, after a year in the making of playing with this little project here and there. And uh, just moving forward and kind of an as build and changing this and tweaking that and you know incorporating that i think it's finally uh i think it's finally done so it's been a long road 21 parts and i think now you guys can see why it took so long so just got back from home depot we actually just picked up the uh the plastic tubing which you see right there Coming from the two protein skimmer cups, which now fall into 
the two 90s, which is way back there. And they now drop into this drain here. And you can also see that I've got the other two lines in. There's only one motor right now in position, which this is one of the CHAs that does 1,900 gallons per hour. It's feeding the one skimmer, but right now the other motor is on the other side in the live rock tank. But that'll be coming over here real soon. The drill has been completely removed, and now you see the emergency overflow there for chamber one. A lot of unions. There's a new one there, 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 and there. So I'll be able to remove this uh, pipe if I ever need to get in a little bit closer if something's going wrong. And we also introduce the trap right there. But that's it. I think we're ready. So the next step right now is to start the aquascaping and polishing the aquarium. A buddy of mine is actually going to be here tomorrow. He's, he's driving in from Columbus. And we're going to be jumping in the tank and uh, putting our final touches on it. So, but that's it. System's built. It's been a long road. I'm kind of, kind of happy to see this whole thing come together. And I will explain how the whole thing works when we go to flood the system and get ready to turn it back on. But for right now, it looks like we're, I might have jumped the gun on this right here. I put all that sand and some live rock in there a couple weeks ago. But uh, with Jonathan coming here tomorrow night, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this back, probably two feet. Put all the live rock in the corner. We're going to kind of gut that area and get ready for uh, the polishing of the, of the uh, front panel and the, on the, and the other panel on the far right side. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, we're out of here. Get out of here, Dad. You hear that? Did you hear that? My son called me Dad! Call me Dad! That's right, the Burger Boys are back, bitches! What's up? What's up?